I'm the Nordic director for Tesla Motors, and um, I'm very excited to be here today to speak to you. Um, I get to speak about something that I really, really love, and something that I fundamentally believe will change the world that we live in. I work for a company whose express purpose is to change the world. In fact, to underline our commitment to this, we've actually inscribed it into our mission statement. Um, to accelerate the world transition towards a sustainable transportation. So how are we going to do this? Well, that's what I'm here to tell you about. Um, I'll start by presenting the company as such, but I'll also talk to you why I believe this is the future. It's my hope that this talk and this presentation will in some way inspire some of you to think differently about electric cars and about how we treat our planet and how we can, in common responsibility, um, become more sustainable. Um, great ideas generally come from gifted individuals, individuals who are driven by passion. However, making such ideas come to life uh, often takes the dedication of many. The best ingredients is don't automatically make for the best cake. A very clear example of this is actually Nikola Tesla, who was arguably one of the most important scientists of all time, yet many of you probably haven't heard of him. He, um, he was very gifted. You've probably heard of the alternating currents. That's the electricity that runs everything in here. You've heard of uh, neon lights. You've heard of x-rays. You've heard of the radio, the electric motor, um, lasers, tons of things that were invented by Nikola Tesla. Unfortunately, he died alone, completely impoverished in a little tiny hotel room in New York in 1943. So being passionate is not really enough. So what is the recipe for success and where do we find the right ingredients? Well, for Tesla Motors, the right ingredients has been a visionary leader, visionary CEO in the form of Elon Musk, and combine this with uh, a lot of mad scientists and, and, and great people who work in a world where the 24-hour clock is just a concept in a different dimension and where failing is just not an option. And where do I fit into this? Well, um, I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for uh, some of my failures earlier in life. Um, in fact, 10 years ago, I went bankrupt with a, with a company. And um, after that ordeal, I just wanted to make a difference. I wanted to do something different and meaningful with my life. And I saw my opportunity in the electric world of EVs, EVs, electrical vehicles. And more precisely, in this new startup company called Tesla, I was prepared to sacrifice everything for this opportunity. I mean, I recall when we were in Norway, I had one car to show the whole Norwegian nation and, and, and a tent. My office was in a, in a cafe near the, the, the Holm Cole ski uh, jump, and, and things could look dire at times, but somehow we made it through, and now Scandinavia is the largest market outside of the US. In fact, we have almost got 10,000 electrical Teslas registered in Scandinavia, and that's in well, four or five years. So what do I talk about when I talk about, what do I mean when I talk about this acceleration of, of transitioning towards sustainable transportation? Well, perhaps a more apt sentence would be catalyzing a change in a very old industry. After more than 100 years of the internal combustion engine, better known as the petrol motor or petrol engine, the auto industry, as we know it, have come to a crossroad. Um, they face significant challenges. 
the reliance on fossil fuels has raised environmental concerns, created dependencies amongst uh, both the industrialized and the developing nations um, on, on imported oil, exposes consumers to volatile oil prices up and down all the time. In addition, the enormous legacy of uh, investments made by the auto industry has to date inhibited the innovation of alternative fuel powertrain technologies. At Tesla, we believe that these challenges offer a historic opportunity for companies that are unencumbered by the legacy of the oil industries. Most people will agree that if we continuously keep burning and removing natural resources and don't replenish them, then we will run out. And we will also destabilize our planet while doing so. At Tesla, we recognize this as being a severe and potentially cataclysmic problem that we, as a human race, have the responsibility to deal with now. So the father of our modern day car, Henry Ford, the man behind the first mass production car, um, the Model T, owed his success to simplicity. In fact, so simple, it used to say that you could choose any color you wanted as long as it was black. Well, at Tesla, we have a slightly broader range of options, but as this next slide will reveal, um, we do like to keep things simple. And, and that's why I brought this. This is, this is the, the exact motor that comes and drives our cars as you see them. This is it. This, is, this produces 400 brake horsepower. It's no more. It's very simple. It doesn't get any more simple. So it doesn't, we don't need to be engineers to understand that going from this and then moving on to where we were before, you can definitely make a difference. So although the Model S and Tesla in general boasts an impressive 500 kilometers of range, and even though the average daily usage of the average driver is no more than about 70 kilometers, the limitations of some uh, electrical vehicles has prompted a term called range anxiety. Um, so to puncture, to puncture this fear, uh, Tesla has built this charging infrastructure using fast chargers, and we have placed these around the world. And these superchargers, as you see them here, um, are the most advanced technology for charging. One of the most exciting and game-changing features of our cars is without doubt the ability to continuously improve them by using wireless connectivity. From a smartphone, you can use it anywhere in the world and you can actually check the car's range, its location, unlock it. You can turn on the cabin heater or the, the air conditioning. It doesn't matter where you are, you can just use it over the air. Um, and it also makes life easier when you want to take a car in for service because the car will send a, a remote diagnosis before it comes. Our cars are controlled by state-of-the-art sof software that, um, that can continuously be upgraded to perfect a car throughout its life. Your car will regularly ask for intervals, uh, whether it wants to be upgraded or not. We're currently on version 6.2 in our software upgrades. And in fact, like last week, we, we, we sent out an upgrade over the, the air, um, which was one of the many pallets of new features that we upgrade with. But this one upgraded the car from being able to do 210 kilometers an hour to do 250 kilometers an hour. All new Teslas are born with safety features such as these radars, cameras, ultrasons, ultrasonic sensors. Um, and by using uh, wireless connectivity, we've been able to activate these over the air. The cars that we produce today are fitted with hardware that to a large extent will e enable these cars to become 90% autonomous within very few years. You don't have to change the car. We will just be able to upgrade the software wirelessly 
over the air. So think about this. Here's a car that is one of the safest vehicles on the road. It has stunning good looks. It fits five adults, and you can actually have two more children in the back. Uh, storage space in front and in the back. And it has the ability to constantly be upgraded and gets better with age. It accelerates like a bat out of hell and you can drive across Europe for free. It sounds too good to be true, but ladies and gentlemen, this is the truth and the future is here right now. So the future holds a lot of exciting things for us. We have just introduced what we call the 70D, which is a medium-sized battery for the Model S. Um, by doing that, we're reducing the cost of ownership. But for more sort of radical changes and newer things, the Model X, which will be the first world all-wheel drive SUV, will be introduced this autumn this year. After the Model X, we'll be taking the last step in the grand master plan that I unveiled earlier, um, the, the car that we refer to as the 3. Now, I don't have any photos of it here, but, but it, it's going to be quite a game changer because it's the one that's going to be a mass production vehicle. It will have the approximate range of the Model S, but it will only cost about half as much. We expect to bring that to market in 2017. Last year, in Nevada, Tesla broke ground in a huge undertaking, the Gigafactory. When it opens in 2017, it will be the largest battery production facility in the world. And we will reduce the cost of lithium-ion batteries by at least 30%. This was, will enable us to slash production costs of the Model 3 that we just spoke about. Um, but it will also make us be able to move into other areas. We're developing batteries um, for further use, for home storage of energy. We're working on home batteries, which um, consumers will be able to use uh, both in their houses, but also in businesses. The Gigafactory here will be um, projected to produce about 35 gigawatts every single year. Um, which is actually equivalent to the uh, full production of the whole world in, 19, in, two, in 2013. So what I'd like to do is we're challenging, or Tesla is challenging the rest of the automotive industry to follow our lead, follow us our suit. We have opened up all of our patents. We've got over 300 patents that all are enticing the other manufacturers to help gain more insight into what it takes to build an electrical car. That's how committed we are. We want everybody to follow our lead. Now try and indulge me in this vision. So what is it with cars that's so special? I mean, for the first 100,000 years that we were around, people didn't need cars. Now. Everybody wants cars. The car is often regarded as a symbol of personal freedom. In the Western world, getting a driver's license is almost like a rite of passage to becoming an adult. In other places, it's the only way we can connect people in little places out in, in the sticks. And other places, the freedom of that driving actually represents is subject to censorship. The problem, though, is that with all these cars, they emit a lot of CO2. In, f in fact, they emit 8.5 billion tons of CO2 into the atmosphere every single year. That 90% of all total global CO2 emissions come from burnings of fossil fuel. So for the purpose of an analogy here, let's imagine for a moment a public pool. If one little boy pees somewhere in, in the corner, the water purifying system and the chlorine will, will actually take care of this incident pretty quickly. But if you have 50 or you have 100 little boys urinating in this pool, it will very quickly become contaminated. Granted, our planet is somewhat bigger than a public pool, but I'm sure you get the idea of where I'm going. 
So consider the following. The annual production of cars is somewhere between 70 and 80 million cars a year. And now we have accumulated 1.4 billion motorized cars in the world. I repeat, 1.4 billion cars. That's almost the same as the entire population of Earth when we invented a car about 100 years ago. In fact, if we place every single car bumper to bumper, we could reach the moon from here. So why don't we do something about this? I mean, we have the technology to shift from fossil fuels to sustainable energy today. What is it that's the hindrance? Well, the answer is very simple. It's money and it's politics. And politics is governed by money. We need to approach this much more pragmatically. A hundred years ago, Henry Ford spoke about democratizing the automobile. He proclaimed that everybody will be able to afford one and everyone will have one. The horse will disappear from the highways and the automobile will be taken for granted. Well, he was right. There's certainly no more horses on the highways. Um, but he was also right because the car has become a global common denominator, a universal language that every human can relate to somehow. But it also shapes and influences most people's lives in one way or another. If we really want to make a change and really want to effectuate a change in global human behavior and towards a more sustainable future, we need to modernize the one thing that for over 100 years has been the symbol of the industrialized world, i.e. the car. The car has become the platform, the standard that forms most people's perception of the modern technology. We need to recalibrate this notion and we use, need to use it for our own advantage by planting the seed for a sustainable revolution in every single car that we build moving forwards. So what can you do? Well, you can promise me two things. You can promise me that whatever you do and whatever decision you make, make it sustainable. And the second thing, if you're ever fortunate enough to be buying a car, go electric. It will change your world and it will change everyone else's. Thank you.